for the iMIF, they also have an onboard charger, but it's only 3.7 kilowatt, if I'm not mistaken. Onboard charger, how does it work? It's uh, we will control the, uh, the onboard charger will have a power factor corrector itself, uh, PFC. They also have the DC DC converter in the onboard charger before it actually goes into the battery. The battery output will be a DC AC converter uh, or inverter before it goes to the motor, which is an uh, either induction motor or uh, uh, another type of motor. This is how a typical power electronics uh, uh, diagram of an uh, onboard charger. Uh, you can see from here, they have the inductance. Uh, they also have the LC filters and also the uh, DC DC converter to actually convert the AC side to the DC side of the battery. Uh, yes, I, like I shown you earlier, that's the look of an onboard charger. Uh, the brand, of course, they, they are produced by some of the Japanese brands as well. So typical power rating can, uh, can come from 3.7 kilowatt to even higher like 17.2 kilowatt used by Tesla. So depending on how much uh, battery is in the car, uh, if you have a smaller onboard charger, your bottleneck will actually be the onboard charger. You will charge slower speed instead of having a, a faster AC charging speed. For offboard charger, which I mentioned uh, also earlier on the DC charger, the P, uh, power factor corrector and also the DC DC converter is actually done at the charger itself instead the inside the car. So the conversion of the DC power supply goes straight to the battery at the car. So we usually call a DC fast charger as an off-board charger rather than an on-board charger because it's not located in the car itself. Uh, this is how a DC charger typically looks uh, uh, looks looks like. Uh, you can see they have an isolated DC-DC uh, uh, power transistor. They also have the diodes. Uh, they have the, it's actually controlled either by the MOSFET or by IGBT drivers. Uh, this one, uh, the, some of them has a metering as well and also sensors in terms of temperature sensors where they actually turn on the ventilation fan if the temperature goes up to a certain uh, degree. And for metering, it's more on the building side where uh, we want to know how much kilowatt hour is used, what we can build either from the time base or the kilowatt hour. Uh, this is a charger by ABB. It's a 175 kilowatt charger, but it can actually be extended to 350 kilowatt. Currently, it's one of the biggest DC charger uh, available in uh, Malaysia. We have actually installed uh, three of those in Porsche showroom. Uh, you can see from here that they actually separated the power cabinet and also the charge post. The power cabinet takes in the AC supply conversion of the DC is actually supplied to the charge post. So the charge post will actually give an output of uh, up to 500 amps DC output. Some of the, the, the DC charger has up to 200 amps. So depending on your car, uh, car, uh, car battery uh, architecture, typically now newer EV cars, the battery, cap, the bucket, the battery architecture can go up to 800 volt DC. Why do we want to push to higher voltage? As you know, always go back to the fundamental, how much power you can actually uh, push is P equals to IV. If your voltage is maintained at 400, you will need bigger current to actually supply more power to the car. If imagine 200 amps cable is actually very large, you need to increase your cable size to, for, to carry 400 amps Imagine a, a person who wants to charge the car, he's like carrying a, a load of very heavy adapter to actually plug into the car. So to actually avoid this thing is to push up the battery uh, to 800 volt so that the cable size can maintain at 200 amps or 300 amps so that you do not have the burden of having so much cable. Uh, I mean, bigger size cable to carry that kind of, kind of, uh, kind of current. That is how the, the electrical, I mean, the EV industry is moving from a typical three to 400 volt uh, battery, cap, uh, battery architecture into a new architecture where it's 800 volt DC. 
Uh, from here, there's a chart from, uh, you can see the, that the charging rate can actually, uh, this uh, last few years actually increased a lot. Their cars now can take up to 150 to 350 kilowatt of charging. Uh, and you can see the battery uh, capacity is some is 400 watt system, some are going at the 800 watt system. The older versions of EVs are all at 400 watt uh, battery version. This one, I think I have covered earlier just to maybe highlight the, the communication protocol. The GPT and the Chademo uses CAN, CAN, CAN bus as the, as the communication protocol, while the CCS2 uh, and also the CCS1 uses the PLC uh, communication. Uh, this is a newly launched. I don't I know. This one haven't been launched yet. They will be launching it soon. Uh, I think by this year, by BMW. Uh, you can see from here that the charging spec, the onboard charger is 11 kilowatt AC. The maximum power that they can draw from the DC side is up to 155 kilowatt DC. On the battery, you can also see capacity of battery is 80 kilowatt, but why usable is 74 kilowatt hour? Why is there a difference between the battery capacity and also the usable battery capacity? So the reason for that is uh, for all lithium-ion